Good morning. This is the last in a three-part series talking about love. Today we use as a sermonic theme the love challenge. The love challenge. Have any of you ever been challenged by love? <laughs> Amen. I'd like to begin today with the lesson of the bird. Earlier I talked about the lesson of a dog, but now let us switch a little to the lesson of a bird. Once upon a time there was this non-conforming sparrow who decided not to fly south for the winter. <clears throat> However, soon the weather turned so cold that he reluctantly started to move southward. In a short time, ice began to form on his wings and he fell to the earth in a barnyard almost frozen. A cow passed by and crapped on the little sparrow. The sparrow thought it was the inn, but then the manure warmed him and defrosted his wings. Warm and happy, able to breathe, he started to sing. Just then a large cat came by and hearing the chirping, inv investigated the sounds. The cat cleared away the manure, found the chirping sparrow and promptly ate him. Now, it may seem that there are no lessons here, but there are. In fact, there are three lessons. One, if you're warm and happy in a pile of shit, keep your mouth shut. <laughs> Number two, everyone who gets you out of shit is not necessarily your friend. And three, everyone who shits on you is not necessarily your enemy. Talking about enemies this morning, let's talk a little bit about what exactly is an enemy. With Russia's military at the back door of Ukraine, there is a whole lot of enemy language going on in the news these days. Ukraine perhaps sees Russia as its enemy. Well, they just got 130,000 estimated troops near its border. That might qualify as calling somebody the enemy. While Russia is saying that it's not going to go to war, and that it's not their desire, they still have 130,000 troops near the border. And now they've begun the sounds of case shillings. Russia also says, we've put out our Christmas list and it's getting ignored. We don't want Ukraine to become a part of NATO and feeling threatened by the US and NATO allies. But for Russia to say, relax, well, there's over 100,000 troops pointing is like someone pointing a gun at you and saying, oh, just chill, it's gonna be okay. Many Ukrainians have left professions to join the military. And it's estimated that 40,000 have already fled the continent, I mean, fled the country of Ukraine for safety. Russia's last invasion was 2014 where they crossed over and seized a part, which has now become a part of Russia. And yet Russia is saying, just chill, we're not going to go to war. For Ukraine, Russia is the enemy. What's at stake here that makes Russia an enemy is democracy. The ability for Ukraine to run their country without interference or bullying from another country. Russia will not leave Ukraine alone. Enemies are not fun to have as we see whether it's globally or personally. An enemy is someone or something that is actively opposed or hostile towards you. It can mean someone or something that means you harm. An enemy is someone or something you have to watch out for. You can never let your guard down with an enemy. You do not trust their intent. You don't trust their motives. They have already shown you who they are and what they think of you. They are someone for whom you absolutely 200% do not trust. An idiom says, keep your friends close and do what? Keep your enemies closer. You gotta watch out for those enemies. We can find enemies in the workplace, in our community, some in their family, and sometimes even in the church. With enemies, we declare war. With enemies, we set up a certain energy towards them and us, us and them. 
with enemies, we often demonize their behavior while drawing light to how noble our behavior is. Having an enemy, a declared enemy, takes a lot of energy. 130,000 were the troops for Russia. I want you to think about who might be seen as an enemy to you. Just imagine one person as we trample off to the text that was given to us today. <clears throat> the text today invites us to operate a certain way toward those we deem as enemies. For starters, it says, love your enemies. Are you feeling that? Not interested. What else, Jesus, you got for me today? As if that wasn't a hard pill to swallow, the next thing Jesus suggests is do good to those that hate you. Y'all feeling that? Pass Jesus, come on next, bring it on. Pray for those who abuse you. Wow, Jesus, you're really giving it to us today. And just when I think I can't take no more of this countercultural spiritual stuff, he says anyone who slaps you Offer the other cheek. I'm speechless. Maybe you should feel speechless too. Can anyone pass this test? And if someone takes your coat, well, go on and give them your shirt. Give to anyone who begs of you. How many times has someone begged you for something and you walked on by? If someone takes your stuff, do not ask for it ever again. Treat others how you want to be treated, not how they treat you. Anybody getting goosebumps here? Sometimes you just have to sit with what's being said. I knew this walk, this walk of being a follower of Christ was special, but this is really special here. A friend of mine from another country says in her culture, they operate differently to people. I remember one day we were talking and I commented on how nice her earrings were and she began to take them off. I said, whoa, 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 what you, what you doing? She says, in my country, <clears throat> if someone says they like something you have, you give it to them. If someone has a need, you give regardless of what you have. In that way, everyone is generally looking out for the other person and that way, we all kind of get taken care of. If someone takes your coat, give them your shirt. Ooh, take them home to your closet. But Lord, I'm still struggling with this giving my cheek for someone to smack after they've already exhibited violence towards me. Today, we're trying to get married, zero tolerance for vengeance and zero tolerance for abuse. And these two are kind of like an unlikely union. One scholar says the word enemy <clears throat> is used eight times in the text. And it's about more than personal vengeance you have against the bridge player who's winning. But here is a genuine hostility and danger that is present. There's a real enemy. We are on the brink of war. A minister had begun a small small little Bible study in his workplace and on the lunch break he would get together with these guys and they would look at the Bible and on this particular day they looked at this passage of scripture after reading it and discussing it some of the workers turned to the minister and said so if I slap you you're going to turn and let me smack you on the other cheek and the minister responds it depends and the worker says it depends that's what the Bible says. What does it depend on? <clears throat> the minister says, it depends on if the Holy Spirit gets to me before I smack you back. I remember that because it really does depend. Amen? We live in a much more gray world. And I dare say, if you plan on walking up on somebody and smacking them, be prepared for the consequences. But this isn't about what we would do as much as what God is calling us to be in the midst of adversity. And let me say for the record, it's not easy. You ever going through something and your friend gives you a lot of advice? You're like, it's easy to give advice. It's easy to know what the right thing is to do. We stumble, we trip, we fall, but it's much harder 
to put that stuff in practice. There are absolutely times when we get it wrong, but then there are times when the Holy Spirit really does get to us first and we get it right. Marrying zero tolerance for abuse with zero tolerance for getting other people back. Maybe not a bad union after all. I'm reading this author and he says, sometimes you have to take some steps back to get the big picture. Sometimes you're so close on a situation that you can't see the situation, so you gotta take a step back. And if it still feels overwhelming, you gotta take another step back. And you keep taking steps back until you can see the bigger picture. So I was visiting this friend who was sick and there was all this stuff in, in her chair and I couldn't sit down. And so I had to take the stuff out of that chair and move it. I think sometimes with us, and this text is challenging us, we gotta take some of the clothing out of the chair in order to be able to sit. Enough steps back, this text is inviting us to make room for us to sit in love, to make room for us to sit with kindness, to make room for forgiveness, to make room to extend grace. If you think about what Jesus really stood for, you just can't get by love. Real hard, authentic, I can't stand you today, love. I'm watching this uh, series called Sweet Magnolias. It's a movie, but it's based on a book. And in it is three characters, and one of the characters, which brings home the point I think I'm trying to make to you all today, is Maddie Tenzin. And at the beginning, the book opens up with Maddie Townsend discovering that her husband is having an affair with Noreen. <coughs> now, some books later, Noreen is about to have a baby, which will be her kid's sister. The family is torn about this, and Maddie is rightfully struggling with anger, right? Because her husband cheated with Noreen. At some point, Maddie is challenged with the whole cheat concept. And she not only extends kindness to Noreen, but she invites her kids as well. I know what she says to her oldest, but she reminds him that it is the Christian thing to do. Why call ourselves Christians at all if we're not going to really lean into the hard stuff of living, I mean of loving, when it's the last thing we want to do? I mean, because it's easy to love nice people, right? It's easy to love people that love you back, right? It's easy to get caught up in love when it feels so good. But the whole thing about love and the love challenge is sometimes it is so hard. A lot of times loving other people is hard work if we are being truthful. Like aging, it's not for the faint of heart. It's not easy. That's why it's called the love challenge. But it draws us to being better people. It draws us to be kinder people. And it draws us to be followers of Christ. Jesus is love, but that love is about more than feeling good. It's more about Hallmark, and it's more, about, more than Valentines and roses and chocolates. It's also about feeling absolutely bad. It's also about feeling grief-stricken. It's also about feeling torn up when a loved one is going through a sickness and you can do absolutely nothing about it. Love hurts, and love sometimes keeps you up at night, keeps you balled up in a fist. Love is also like elastic on pants. It has the capacity to stretch us, if we'll let it. Jesus' love is generally pushing us and it's nagging us to be better, not to just be who we are, which I know a lot of you are incredible people, but to be better than incredible people. And sometimes it holds a mirror up to us and we don't like what we see, but the mirror doesn't lie. We are being invited to the love challenge in all of its complexities. Not only when the sun comes out, but when it's thundering and it's storming and the wind is blowing. So whoever that enemy is, a person maybe you haven't spoken to, the text today challenges us on this whole notion of what is an enemy? Is that person our enemy or is that someone who hurt our ego? You see, because not everyone who shits on you is your enemy. There are real, 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 real enemies, and we are on the brink of war. Let Jesus' love guide us 
a little more, let us hold on when crossing the street. Let the Holy Spirit get to us before something else does. Jesus' love pushes us. Jesus' love pushes us to go further than we can go ever without it. Amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> Dear Lord, all this talk about cheeks, it gives room for pondering. Sometimes we come to your word and we really like what it says, and other times we're like, mm, I don't know. We're looking at you a little side-eyed today, maybe. But Lord, we hear as we take steps back, one step back so we can see the bigger picture, another step back so we can see the bigger picture. Dear Lord, we hear this invitation to be our best self with the Holy Spirit. We hear this invitation to extend love in action to those who ask for it. And dear Lord, we hear this invitation to love, to love our enemies. And we know it may involve cheeks and coats and shirts and prayer and good deeds. Thanks for reminding us of the path you call us to as followers. And thank you for already lighting the way. We are holding your hand and hoping the spirit holds us and leads us forward united. Amen.